In the heart of forgotten America, deep in the breathtaking Appalachian Mountains in eastern Kentucky, children are hurting. Drugs, poverty, and abuse are shattering their hopes of a bright future. The Children's Joy Foundation journeyed there and brought love, hope, and joy. The Appalachian Mountains lie in the consciousness of America as a reminder of the haunting beauty of a bygone era. Its conquest by early settlers to America holds a secure place in the annals of American history. Originally called Appalachian by Spanish conquistadors after a Native American tribe, it is a region that extends through 13 states, from Alabama to Maine, even reaching all the way to Canada. It runs from the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, the Daniel Boone National Forest of Kentucky, the Blue Ridge Mountains of West Virginia, until the White Mountains of New Hampshire. But their beauty hides a malady that is eating away at the spirit of its people. Houses are run down, there is no industry, no jobs, no means of transportation, and inadequacy of social services. An air of despair hangs over the lush green forests, like a thick fog. Poverty is a byword here, as the Appalachian people have for generations existed with difficult living conditions, born from their isolation from society. It's very hard to get a job around these parts, unless you know somebody that would go pull for you. But and most people really, really want to work, they can't get a job. For creating jobs, transportation is necessary. And transportation is the big problem in this area. There's very little economy, factories, anything that requires shipping is very limited in this area because of the lack of roads. And the roads that we have are very windy, curvy. The mountains on the eastern boundary of Kentucky are covered with thick forests. Before the 20th century, the only ways of transportation were in the valleys and natural waterways. While the Appalachian Mountains are already accessible today, the interior roads are still narrow, unpaved, often impassable during bad weather and wintertime. The steepness of the mountain slopes affected land use, and caused erosion, making cultivation difficult. This has discouraged any kind of economic development. The yearly household income in the Appalachian region is lower than the national yearly household income. It is lowest in eastern Kentucky. People don't have the money to buy washer and dryers. They go out in the creeks and wash it. They go out and mud, big, they set big totes of water outside to actually get water for their family to drink because of um, just everything. Mm -hmm. A lot of the water comes from the creek. Mm -hmm. They take big buckets of water and take it to their house and put it in the bathtub. There is mm -hmm. about three people I know that don't have running water right now. Are taking baths in the creek and just, just to get clean. It, it's rough, it's rough around here but we have to provide for ourselves because we, we don't get the stuff that we all need. The original settlers to the Kentucky mountains were Scottish, Irish, and English immigrants to the United States. They were strong and stubborn, 
and in the case of the Scots, very clannish. The isolation of the region and the harsh life there developed a culture that was rugged, fiercely independent, interested in freedom from the restraints of law and order, wanting to be left alone. When Addison and I went to Tennessee to look for, you know, contacts or um, agencies that would like to um, receive our Children's Church Foundation help, we really had a struggle because nobody would take us in and none of them None of them contacted us except for one, and that was Appalachian Ministries. And so they were kind of um, uh, skeptical in the beginning. But, you know, they, they gave us a chance um, to, to have an implementation here. They, they gave us this trust to the Children's Trade Foundation. And uh, since day one, you can really see that they really do appreciate it because even the, the, the cotton candy, even the, the popcorn, they, they were just completely amazed. As we continued to work with the Appalachian communities and got to know these children and had a relationship with them, we have come to know and realize that the, the deeper and darker problems that they're facing is not just a poverty. Like many children of Appalachian families, Lisa Lacey Halterbrand and her sister Michelle Franklin, a school teacher, left life in the Appalachian Mountains to find their fortunes in the big cities. But the calling to return to their people brought them back home. Sheriff Garland Lacey, Lisa's father, and her mother Sue are loving grandparents to nine active children. Together, they make up a warm, somewhat non-conventional family that is common here in the Appalachian region. The children are active and happy now, but they have a heartbreaking past. Each of the children belonged to families living in Zoe and neighboring towns. Lisa took them in because of the gnawing drug crisis in Appalachia. I've had Andrea since she was 15 months old. Andrea's mom is a heroin addict. And she was tired of taking care of a baby because Andrea cried. And Andrea worries about her mom. She's afraid her mom will overdose. Andrea has a half-sister, Trinity. Uh, because we got separated whenever she was a baby and we didn't get to see each other for three or four years straight, and now she kind of gets on the nerves more than ever. I'm a nerve. You, yeah. We try to get them together, you know, and let them spend time so they have memories, because otherwise they wouldn't, because their mom is... A lot of, of, of mothers now here in this town, they're all on drugs, and you'll see a lot of grandparents, aunts, you know, that's taking care of them because of that reason. Half of our community just is bad people. The murderers, drug addicts, rapists, all kinds of people because they can get away with it and they know they can get away with it. I really thank God for me here. He wanted me to have a better life than what it was. Drug use has become an epidemic in the Appalachian Mountains. Areas like Eastern Kentucky, Southwest Virginia, Southwest Ohio, and East Tennessee hold the highest rates of drug overdose in the country. It's the major problem right now is the drugs. Because most adults has it, you know, in their family. On, and I feel sorry for the kids. You know, the, their mom and daddy is on it, so they want to get nothing. They don't get what they need, like food, because most parents don't take it, you know, buy the drugs with. The clothing, they don't get what they really need. Attention, loving, caring like a mom and dad should for their kids. Kennedy and James are related through Kennedy's birth mother. Both of them were very sick when they were born. She spent 35 days in ICU in Lexington in the NIC unit um, detoxing because she was a drug baby. She's tall and willowy and just beautiful, but she's very emotionally messed up. James also spent time in the hospital detoxing as a newborn because his mother was heavily addicted to methamphetamine, a deadly drug which is now being manufactured right at Zoe's backyards. Because my real mom was on drugs and she had to go to do a lot. I do not like my real mom. She's a mean person. I love my real dad though. He, 
He got off of drugs. He got a job. Got two kids. He's doing great. NAS, or neonatal abstinence syndrome, is a condition affecting newborn babies born to mothers addicted to drugs. Here in Appalachia, the center of drug dependence are prescription drugs or opiates, such as heroin, codeine, methadone, methamphetamine, and the latest, fentanyl, one of the most deadly. A newborn with NAS experiences drug withdrawal symptoms, such as excessive crying, diarrhea, seizures, vomiting, and many, many more. Many children born with NAS also suffer cognitive and speech disabilities. One of Lisa's most heartbreaking experiences was adopting her youngest children, Lincoln and Gabe, who are brothers. Gabe was in the hospital for 39 days detoxing my two-year-old because he was a drug baby. I said his mom was my man. And uh, he was in, in the hospital and he, I mean, he withdrew just like an adult with withdrawal from drugs. He, he shook, he had diarrhea, he screamed in pain, his skin hurt, he, and he was a newborn. You know, it's, 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 and I went through that with him and with Kennedy, and it's just horrible what drug use is doing to the baby. Because of the massive drug problem in Appalachia, more and more children are being pulled out of their homes and placed in foster care. The number of children placed in foster care in rural Appalachia because of drug problems has increased dramatically over the last few years. Hundreds of children are waiting to be placed in foster homes. I think it starts out for money because you could cook math and make money off of it. You can invest $50 and get $350 back. So then they use it to see if it's good enough to sell and they like it and they end up losing everything. I see that over and over again. They lose their children, they love their children, but they, they love the heroin, they love the math too. Harley and Joe are Lisa's oldest sons. Joe is learning how to drive, while Harley is her handyman. Joe has been living with Lisa since he was 12. His father died of a cocaine overdose, and he and his siblings were taken in by different foster families. This is Summer, my sister, and Sabrina, my little sister. I don't see Sabrina much, but I see Summer every couple months, which, and I go up there and stay for a week or so. Harley, who has Asperger's disorder, a high-functioning autism, has been with Lisa since he was three. At about three, they got uh, they got full custody of me, uh, just because my birth mother, Darla, was, she knew she was on a slippery slope. She knew that she didn't want me to be raised anywhere near what was going on around her. I got a great family. I got a, a bunch of wonderful siblings, a great mother. None of us are related by blood to Lisa, but that blood doesn't matter, <laughs> not at all. One of the major challenges facing Zoe is its low literacy rate. In Eastern Kentucky, 30% of adults do not know how to read or write. This poses a lot of problems for children trying to make it through school in Appalachia. Michelle tutors Lisa's children, all of whom are homeschooled, as well as the children in the community who call on her for help. A lot of the children in this area that I work with personally have trouble with literacy a lot of them do not have parents who were successful in school. Higher education is not a priority for most of the families. It doesn't matter. My grandpa couldn't read. My dad can't read. I don't need to read. If we don't intervene to make sure that these children stay in school or to make sure that these children are supervised into doing homeschool work, then they're going to turn out to be like their parents and will not be literate. We knew that in order for the children uh, there in Zoe, Kentucky to get out of the cycle of poverty, that the Children's Joy Foundation uh, will be able to help them by focusing on education. So in October 2018, we signed a memorandum of understanding with Appalachian Ministries, stipulating that the Children's Joy Foundation USA would be donating a mobile library to the children of Zoe, Kentucky in the Appalachian Mountains. There was a lot of um, exchanging of emails, phone calls. First of all, we were, you know, we were building a mobile library. We wanted everything to be perfect because this is exactly what they um, are expecting from the Children's Joy Foundations. And we found this company called the Fleetwood Mobile Home. 
And um, after talking to Matthew, one of the uh, head builders of uh, mobile homes, uh, they were willing to help us uh, build the Appalachian children's um, dream of having their own library. And they said it's almost done and we can't wait to see it. This is the tunnel, as you can see, they're bringing in that chassis and that's what they're going to build the house on. They're going to build it from the belly up. We wanted to personalize the mobile library for the children, knowing they had specific needs, so we did the interiors ourselves. The trip from Lafayette, Tennessee took a total of four hours. Driving through the Daniel Boone National Forest was quite a challenge for the delivery truck. Zoe is a little community on Shoemaker Ridge, a narrow strip of land on top of the mountains. Happy when you see when all of these things are done, you know. Um, we just felt very excited in um, building this uh, mobile library for them. Oh. And even very excited to see the faces of the children when they go into this library. And, um, and again, thank you, Pastor, for that gift for these uh, children operation. Perfect. With the structure in place, it was time to start with the interiors of the library. Bella and I'm from Keepers Club of Nashville, Tennessee and I volunteer to help and today I'm organizing the books for the elementary kids. I think it's such a great blessing that the Children's Joy Foundation is able to have something like this.
And finally, it was done. It's almost time, and the turnout is better than expected. The launching of the library catches the attention of the entire ridge, and there are some familiar faces. Families who attended the Children's Joy Foundation's gift-giving and feeding events over the past two years are here. The kids are excited, knowing that in the Foundation's events, goodies like pizza, popcorn, ice cream are always unlimited and you can bring home as much as you want, too. There are many new guests. Mothers have brought their children so they can experience something new. Some of them have just put their life of drug dependence behind them and are hoping that this new project means a fresh takeoff point for them and their children. Some are still tight in the grip of addiction, but are counting on the dream that there is a rainbow around the bend. We thank you for this special day as we convene to open the Appalachian Mobile Library. an opportunity to know that they are definitely thought of, uh, that they're special, and that stuff like this is more important to them now than what they'll ever know. It's amazing. A few days ago, it was just empty. I like it. It's awesome. I love it. There <laughs> you go up. This is nice. I just think it's a really good opportunity that you guys are all coming out here and doing this. I think it's really nice with the kids and you know it just gives them something to do. I think it's real nice. You will see it. <laughs> I like the paint, the, uh, the colors, the kids are going to love that and it's a whole lot bigger than I thought it was. This is so neat. Mm -hmm. I wear it heavily beauty a lot, mm -hmm. a whole lot. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that there's no no, you have yeah, to go all the way on the other side of Babel, the and then on the other side of Babel uh -huh. to get to it. 
Yeah. And there's only certain times you can. Can, yeah. This location, having a library here, is going to be new for the families that we may have reference materials that they can borrow and return. A lot of the books will be given to the kids if they want them. Mm. We're hoping that with the mobile library, we can expose them to the joys of reading, not just because it will benefit their education and their job skills, which it will, but because it's enjoyable and fun. And then when school starts, we will have tutoring available to the children who are in public school. Uh, the balloons in the trees, everything was just over the top beautiful for us. We love it. We love the, the artwork on the signs. I mean, it's, I'm so happy. I'm just so happy. And we're very blessed that you all found us and that you can bless us. And in turn, we can bless the children in the community. They took their books home with them. And one little girl only took two books. And I said, you can't get more than that. And she said, I'm going to bring them back so I can check out more. I'm going to use it like a real library. It's wonderful. We could never, I mean, we could never done nothing like that. So we very much appreciate it. I would like to thank him for what it, what he's done for us. We had never heard of your all's uh, ministry or nothing like this. And, and for you to come in and have the party that you had last year and, and then to this year bring in a, a trailer, it's just wonderful. The help that we've got, we, we appreciate it. I would like to, to take this opportunity to say to Pastor Apollo how much I appreciate his group and his dedicate, his desire to help the children, not just here, but around the world. And what you've done here is just amazing. And, and the people that you send our way are amazing as well. And I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. We are trying to do our best to do ministry to these children that we work with. And I, as well as yourself, was raised in extreme poverty, and I know what it's like. And, and so we're trying to teach these children about Jesus, and if they have Jesus, they have a better life. I thank you so very, very much. I am so intrigued by his life story. I have been watching on YouTube about Africa. I watched a, a video on Africa. I watched a video of the, the parade in the Philippines. I have contacted a friend I have in the Philippines and told him that I got to meet you all personally. I'm just so intrigued that your pastor has been able to just a foundation of joy. And that's what I try to do. From being a little kid, a little poor kid, to having an international recognition of making people happy. I just thought that was so neat. He said that we are a manifestation of God's love. And I appreciated that because that's what I try to do. I can, I can love. I can't build buildings and cross the oceans, but I can love. And your pastor undoubtedly has the same mindset as I do. And he has the same heart that I do. And maybe one day I'll get to meet him. <laughs> He's always welcome to come to Kentucky. <laughs> Finding a permanent solution to the evil that is destroying the future of Appalachia's people, beginning with its children, takes an entire nation to solve. For the Children's Joy Foundation, big steps always start with little ones. And everything always begins with love. And where love and goodness has been planted, lives have been touched, doors have been opened, relationships have sprung up, and opportunities to empower lives have bloomed. This journey of empowerment with the children of the Appalachian Mountains has just begun, and we just can't wait to see them growing up free and happy, taking hold of their destiny.